Hello everyone, my name is Halsey. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson from the Kojak Legacy Edition. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. This lesson is of the fourth lesson of our winter quarter. All the lessons in December is focusing on God sends Jesus. By the scripture for today, Sunday, December 24th, is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through verse 17. Lesson title is, The Messiah Arrives. Before we go into our lesson, we will have prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in bringing your only son into this world. Your son and our savior. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new lives. Now, Lord, we ask that you will help us. Help us to share uh, the joy that, that we have received uh, from Jesus to others. Help us to share this joy in this dark and dying world that Jesus Christ came to set free, to set the captive free, to save, to deliver, and to set free. And we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Bless every persons that listens and that watches bless every teachers continue lord to give understanding continue to give us our strength and encouragement and we say thank you we thank you lord for all your many blessings so many blessings lord and we're thankful we give you praise for all things in jesus name amen this lesson is outlined and it is divided into three sections Section one will deals with preparing for the birth, and that's verses one through verses six. Section two will deals with announcing the birth, and that's verses seven through twelve. Section three will deals with sharing the birth, and that's verses thirteen through verses seventeen. Before we go to our printed text, we will just add a little bit of background. Our lesson uh, today, it involves uh, the birth of the Messiah, the birth of uh, Jesus Christ. And when we think about uh, birth and babies, every birth is a miracle from God. And every child is a gift from God. And the same is uh, with Jesus. Jesus is a gift from God. Jesus is a miracle uh, from God. God sent his only son to this world to be our savior. And uh, Luke, who uh, writes this gospel, he tells of uh, Jesus' birth. He tells us of uh, most of the details surrounding uh, this awesome occasion. He lets us know that with a divine father and a human a mother, Jesus entered into history, God in flesh. Luke, uh, he presents us with an, an accurate account of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ as a man, as a perfect human being. Luke wrote of his humanity. He wrote of his humanity, however, he affirms his divinity. Luke's uh, emphasis uh, is on Jesus' humanity. Jesus, uh, the Son of God, is also the Son of Man. So, uh, in chapter 1, uh, Luke begins his story uh, with an angel appearing to Zachariah and then to Mary, telling them about uh, the upcoming births of their sons. From Zechariah and Elizabeth would uh, come John the Baptist, uh, who uh, would prepare the way for Christ. And from Mary, uh, she would conceive a child by uh, the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit. Mary and Joseph by uh, divine design would travel uh, to Bethlehem 
to be a part of the census. God is always working things out for his good. They would travel in Mary's uh, late pregnancy. They would travel to Bethlehem to be a part of the census. And Bethlehem was the town of David, and that would fulfill scripture where Jesus would be born. And the angels I would come and announce this joyous event to the shepherds who uh, would rush to see uh, baby Jesus by faith. And this joyous news, it caused uh, the shepherds to give the Lord praise and to spread the good news. We will now go to section one. And it will deal with preparing for the birth. Verse 1, reading from a King James Version, a Luke chapter 2, verse 1 says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Verse 2, And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And here we see uh, how this verse uh, describes uh, the events surrounding the birth of Christ, and that including the decree that went out from Caesar Augustus for a census, that, in other words, the people would be counted uh, that it requires for all the people to be uh, taxed. They should be registered. Uh, and that, would, that, would, that was good for them because in those days, that's how they would uh, trace their ancestral towns, whom they belongs to, their tribe. It was a way and a form of identification, identifying whom they belongs to. And in this case, it was the perfect time to fulfill scripture that has been prophesying where the Messiah would be born. This uh, was uh, the prophesied birthplace of Jesus Christ. Verse 3, And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And again, uh, this taxing process was all a part of God's bigger plan. Caesar Augustus may have thought that he was uh, just gathering them up to go uh, register them so they could pay taxes, but God had a bigger plan, and he was just a tool that God used to help along the way so prophecy uh, would be fulfilled. Verse 4, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Five, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with a child. Jesus was to be born of the descendant of David. And Luke, I uh, hear he made a point uh, to record the path they took in this way all the territories that they crossed over would be a reference a reference point and the Jews uh, would recognize that David had been born and was raised in Bethlehem so it would uh, further provo provide that solid evidence of these events that surround uh, Jesus' birth. And both uh, Gospels, both Matthew and Luke, provides uh, us with the genealogy of Jesus, uh, which confirms uh, that he was born from the descendant of King David. And that's Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3. And also uh, in uh, Genesis 49 and verse 10. Uh, provides us with the information that uh, the Messiah would come from the tribe of Judah. And in Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6, 
It lets us know that the Messiah uh, would come from the line of David. So there, these are all historical uh, events that proves uh, Jesus' uh, birth and what scripture and prophecy says about him and that God was fulfilling them. Verse 6, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And again, uh, you know, while Caesar uh, was sitting in his little uh, palace making uh, this decree and thinking that, you know, he was doing something harmful, uh, flexing his little muscles and, and flexing his little power and authority. While he was doing that, Jesus uh, was on his way. God's plan was moving forward. And this is you know, another reminder to let us know that God controls all things. He controls all history. Because by the, by the decree of Augustus, Jesus was born in the very town prophesied for his birth. And no matter uh, what a Caesar did or said, God was in control of turning things around. You know, scripture reminds us about the power that God has over the hearts of kings. In Proverbs uh, chapter 21 and verse 1, it uh, lets us know that the king's heart is like a stream of water directed by the Lord. He turns it wherever he pleases. And you know, in those days, our kings possessed absolute power, absolute authority. And they were often uh, considered to be like little gods in front of the people. But the Proverbs here shows that God has ultimate authority over this world's rulers, all of them. We will now go to section two. It will deal with announcing the birth. Verse seven. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And we see here how uh, Mary had her baby and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, or some aversion, I uh, say, strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger. It, you see the, the, the humble beginning that Jesus came. Jesus came with a humble beginning. Jesus is king of the world. Jesus is God in flesh. Look at his beginning. Look at the humility. You know, uh, many babies uh, where we are today, when they're born, they're wrapped up and cuddled up in nice, warm blankets. And right here uh, should help us to humble ourselves. Jesus was God's only begotten son. And look how he came into the world. Laying in a manger and no room for him in the the inn, wherever that was, or whatever that would look like. We know it doesn't look like a hotel now where we are today, but whatever or however it looked, there was no room. But God is a provider. God will make way out of no way, and he's going to do it so he uh, will get the glory out of it. He will uh, protect Mary and Joseph. He would provide for them. And he would make things uh, comfortable for them so he could get the glory out of it. When we find ourselves in certain places, we should always remember these stories that we serve a God who is a way maker, promise keeper. He's a light in all of our dark places and he will get us out of it if we trust and believe in him to do so when the right time comes. The Lord, uh, he did not uh, promise any of us 
troubled free life or pain free life or a life without difficulties especially uh, when we are doing his will we are not guaranteed a comfortable life but we are promised that everything even in our most discomfort life has meaning in God's plan for our lives. Verse 8, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And here uh, we continue to see how a God continues to reveal his son, but not to those uh, we might expected him to do so with. He announced uh, Jesus' birth to shepherds in the fields. This was not the atmosphere the Jews expected as the birthplace of the Messiah, their king. They thought their promised Messiah would be born in a royal surroundings. But the Lord uh, brings him into this world in a low place, a humble place. You know, we should not limit God uh, by our expectations. He's at work where he needs to be in those dark places, in those dirty uh, places where many won't even go. God is at work there bringing hope to the hopeless. You know, Jesus right here, just from where he was born, was able uh, to be relatable to many, including the shepherds. If he had came in this a royal a palace, many would not be able to relate to him, including us. It would be hard for us to relate to him. But God, he knows where we are and he knows how to reach us. This announcement to those that society would look down on is, is an evidence of God's concern for all people including those that society uh, looked down upon and ignored. We can take great comfort and great joy right here that God sees us and he's concerned about us. And verse 10 lets us know that uh, the angels uh, let the shepherds know not to be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings, great joy, which shall be to all people. This uh, right here was the greatest event in history. The Messiah had been born. And as often happened, uh, the people experiencing uh, the angel's presence would fall into fear, sore afraid. And it begins uh, with the angels uh, giving them this great announcement. And they, even, they, even though they were uh, terrified, afraid, their fear turned into joy. And that uh, joy turned into running and spreading the word. And you know, right here, it should also uh, helps us to see how when we approach or when we prepared ourselves uh, to meet with the Lord in prayer, how we should approach in an attitude of gratitude, in an attitude of joy, ha ha have a joyful attitude, knowing that we are communing and fellowshipping with our Savior.
and uh, because of who he is just like the shepherd we also should have that a uh, wonderful enthusiasm of sharing sharing the joy that we experience with the lord with others verse 11 for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And we continue here to see how uh, these verses, how they are fulfilling God's promises. He promised David. In 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse uh, 12, when he said, For when you die, I will raise up one of your descendants, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Again, we see a reminder that we can depend on the Lord to keep his word, to keep his promises. And God, uh, he promised way back uh, then to send a savior. What is a savior? Well, a savior would be one who delivers a people out of danger. You're delivering, you're rescuing. And in this case, our sins puts us in danger. You know, danger like fire puts us in that danger. And God sent Jesus Christ to rescue us from this eternal. This is eternal. Sins cause eternal death. But Jesus came to rescue us from this condemnation and eternal death Jesus Christ is our Savior who rescues us and Jesus is not uh, only our Savior he's also our Lord the King who reigns forever the King who reigns over our lives that is why you know, we need to surrender our, our lives to the Lord because he is the king of our lives. And Jesus Christ is the greatest king to have ever lived. You know, we could spend a lot of time thinking about uh, Jesus' title. And we, we can see on countless occasions, and history has proven it, that a baby will become a king however only once has a king become a baby back to the lesson verse 13 and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying 14 glory to god in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now we see the angels are given this good news. And the shepherds are privileged. This was a privilege for them. Remember, society sees them as the lowest, dirty, low, low shepherds out taking care of animals. And God has chosen them to receive this good news. And uh, to experience this enormous numbers of angels all at once, praising the Lord. Listen to what they are saying. They're praising the Lord. They were celebrating God's glory and the peace which the Savior brings to this dark world, to those who will believe. The redemption of this world is for God's glory. God's glory in the, yep, in the highest. God's good will brought peace into this dark and dying world. How? 
from the love of God. John 3 and 16 says it's best. Uh, John 3 and 16, it lets us know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes on him is not condemned, but he who believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. That is Jesus' purpose here on earth, to save this dark and dying world from an, an eternal danger. Jesus came to save us from this eternal danger, which is hell, where the flame and the fire never goes out. This is why we need to share this good news, why Jesus came, the purpose of what uh, Jesus came here on earth to do, to accomplish for his Father, to save mankind from an eternal punishment for sin. Back to the lesson, verse 15, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And you know, uh, the shepherds here uh, they were moving by faith. The angels told them, proclaimed to them the birth of Jesus Christ, including where and how to find him. However, they had to move by faith. They moved on faith, and as, as expected, they found Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, exactly the way the angels had said. And again, uh, we continue to see uh, God's favor upon the shepherds. They were among the first uh, group to see uh, little baby Jesus uh, face to face. And God ordained this for them. And by faith, they received it and went. And that is a part of what scripture teaches us about faith and uh, receiving. In Romans chapter 10, and start looking at uh, verse uh, 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how uh, shall they hear without a preacher? 15. And how shall they preach except be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them who preach the gospel of peace and uh, bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Here uh, we see how uh, the shepherds, they heard and by faith they move. The word got into their not just physical hearing, but it got into that place of heart and it causes them to move. You know, same uh, should be said about us where we are today. When we hear God's word, when we hear his word of truth, we too should be compelled to go, to move, to see, and to share. And we notice uh, they didn't uh, wait for another day to go. They 
hurried. They immediately responded uh, by faith. Because think about what waiting does to us sometimes. It causes us to start thinking and overthinking and changing our minds and, and having doubts and all of that. But they move on what they have heard right away. And look what they uh, saw when they got there. Uh-huh. Exactly as they were told, little baby Jesus lying in a manger. Just because they obeyed by faith. And God greatly rewarded them with the privilege of seeing baby Jesus firsthand. And again, just imagine what their story uh, would have been if they did not move right away by faith. Their story would have not been uh, the same. And again, uh, we can say the same thing for us too by uh, thinking how many times many of us, because we didn't move when the Lord directed us to move, our, our stories remain the same. No changes, no faith in action. Our faith in, in God, it requires actions. It requires for us to move, to do something. Don't just sit there. You know, James uh, himself uh, put it this way in James uh, chapter 2 and starting at verse 17 he says so you see it isn't enough just to have faith faith that doesn't doesn't show itself by good deeds is no faith at all it is dead and useless and James I uh, hear wasn't talking about uh, good deeds for salvation no he's talking about Put in what we claim in action. If we say we know Jesus, uh, our action, our behavior should show someone around us who we belongs to. To the lesson, verse 17. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Do you see what they did? They made it known abroad. They went telling, telling of the good news. So question, what has the Lord told you to do? And because you obey and move, someone was able to benefit from your obedience of faith. Because like these shepherds, we too we have that obligation to tell someone about Jesus Christ and why he came. If we don't do anything else, we have an obligation to tell someone about Jesus Christ and why he came. So as we close in summary, uh, throughout history, the Lord has made it very clear that Human efforts and human uh, prestige are nothing unless he is at the center of it all. The Lord routinely uses those the world deems unimportant to accomplish his great, great plan. People like Mary, people like the lowly shepherds are uh, to experience his glory and to be among the first to hear about Jesus' birth. The Lord uh, didn't give this first-hand news uh, to some kings of scholars or of prominence. He gave it to these ordinary lowly shepherds. No wonder uh, Paul says, in his uh, writing in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 and verse uh, 27, it says, God deliberately chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose those who are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things 
despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and use them to bring to nothing what the world considers important, so that no one can ever boast in the presence of God. The shepherds are told everyone about the good news of great joy. And that is what Jesus represents. Jesus represents a great joy. He is our Savior, the sacrifice one for our sins. He is the anointed one. He is our Lord, the master, the ruler, the boss of our lives. You know, being obedient and following uh, the Lord is not easy. It involves a lot of doing. It involves a lot of depending on. If we uh, put our trust in the Lord and depending on Him and allow Him to guide us and to lead us and to help us, we will benefit and we will experience the great joy that these shepherds were sharing when they too experienced the joy of Christ. He too must make up in our minds that a God's promises involves challenges and difficulties. When we think back, uh, the path from Egypt uh, to the promised land, they were led straight through the Red Sea. When we think back, the promised land had uh, giants live, living uh, there. And now here, uh, Jesus' birth was redirected by the census that caused a series of difficult events. If we as Christians are going to be that witness that God called us to be, we are going to have to persist and to endure to accomplish God's greater work. And so as we go through this week, let us have an aim. Let us have an aim to share the great joy Jesus came to give to everyone. And that is to be our Lord and Savior. And this will conclude our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, Please give a thumbs up, share, subscribe, or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.